Hello, and welcome back to Prusa Alive. Uh, we are so glad to have you guys here. We have missed you. Uh, it's been a while, um, but uh, I am joined, as always, with the wonderful Nicholas Sousa and hey, Joseph everyone. Prusa. Hi. And I'm Matt Stoltz. Uh, okay, so we have we have a hell of a show for you guys. Yeah, today. this will be I'm, packed. We will have, yeah. I think, trouble getting everything. Yeah, I, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to be like putting yeah. the hammer down to keep th keep things going here. Yes. So, uh, without any uh, further ado, let's let's get it going. Uh, we do have Luca from uh, Out of Marvels with us today, um, so that will be our guest, and it's gonna be great. But uh, let's show off our our prints. Who's who's got what? What you got, Mickey? What's why your you, printer's pick you, of the week? You almost never start, Matt. Why don't, why don't you give it? Okay. A, All right, start? I'll start. Uh, absolutely. So mine is uh, the Fates and Dice Tower uh, by Ooh. Kim Bolt, uh, wow. and I printed fancy, it in one fancy. of the fun color change, uh, you know, fast color change rainbow uh, filaments. But it's just such a pretty. Uh, pretty model to begin with. So so many fun little details and everything else. And it's got the little hole. You stick your dice down there, and they they roll down the stairs inside and pop out. And you know you get good rolls for all your your fun uh, gaming Dungeons and Dragons you know kind of action. And, Is it? You know, it just it's a it's a great model for one of these color change filaments. So it's it's a two two part. It's three parts. Three so parts. the 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 base, and she has a couple different bases that she makes for them. Um, and then the the main the the main oh, nice. part of the tower and then the roof um, are this... all separate parts. I did I did glue the base on just to make it easier to kind of carry around, but you can yeah. take off the the top and and mm -hmm. access the inside. The so. seams are very well hidden. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but because they're at the yeah, the different yeah, yeah, points, yeah. like you don't I, I see mean, them at I mean, all. From, and from that great. distance through Zoom, I don't think we can see true. seams. Well, right, <laughs> true. right, true, true, true. true. All right. So yeah. There we go. Uh Joe, what do you right. have? I can ah. I mean I can already see it. But, okay, they can hear it now, but they, they can't. So this is a percussion frog. And out oh wow. It's actually pretty loud when you yeah. Yeah. From Binks. From Binks. Isn't Binks? Hey, that's Sara. Yes, of course. That is... You didn't know? I didn't realize when when yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sarah is working uh, at the customer support. Yeah. Nice. So, so is it is it partially partially hollow, like in the mouth, so it yes, gets yes. more echoey? Yes. Cool. And it's a photogrammetry scan. Very nice. I approve photogrammetry oh, nice. scan very much. Nice. Percussion frog. Very cool. All right. And I have, to the surprise of maybe no one, a drippy bucket. I'm surprised. <laughs> you are surprised? Yeah. I mean, every, everyone's printing them. No, no. I, I yes. wanted one as well. <laughs> and yeah, so that's a model that's trending on Prusa printers pretty hard right now. And there are tons of inserts for it. And yeah, just looks fun, I think. So, yeah. uh, like, let me give a shout out to Dave, Dave Money Sign. Dave, Dave Money Sign. I'm gonna go with Dave Money Sign, I guess. Uh, yeah, I, they are, they, they. It has already been printed in tons of colors, and yeah, we now actually have makes on Prusa printers, so. We can, oh, wonderful! Yeah, so we can check it out in different oh, colors. Oh, a lot of people are using it. Yes. Yeah. Nice. I just, you know, looks cool. Mm. Yeah, it's a it's a super cute model. Uh, yeah. it it got it got entered in our most recent contest, our gaming contest, um, as one of the entries. So True. It's a it's a little it's a little questionable gaming, but I mean, I guess you you can was, store your I dice in there or your, your yeah. other parts. But yeah. I, I have it open here. Yeah, that is, that is questionable. Yeah, we will see. Yeah, someone needs to find a game with buckets. Buckets. True. Okay. Uh, bucket of monkeys? Oh no, that's barrel of monkeys. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Uh, so we've got some news for you. Um, a lot of you have have been questioning and asking asking out there. Uh, Jordan was was bugging us yesterday very specifically. Um, when is there going to be a version of Prusa Slicer 2.4 available for people to access? Ooh, and no. Alf now no. Alpha now. is out today. Now. Yes. Usually we say say. Normally we say soon, but now we can say now. Or Friday. Right. 
Yeah, or Friday. Yeah. Yes, or Friday. Yes. <laughs> but, you don't I mean, even have to wait till Friday. It's out right now. Yeah, we were thinking about doing it on Friday, <laughs> but then we found out that today is the 10 year anniversary of Slicer's first comet. That's so incredible. congratulations, Alessandro. Yeah, yeah, Alessandro Renelucci starting this awesome project that Prusa Slicer is based on. We are very proud of that. So to celebrate that, we, we announced it, I mean, released the alpha today, which is awesome. Yeah, and, and I challenge everyone to read the changelog in <laughs> less than 15 minutes. I mean, without speaking this <laughs> time. Actually, what we found out is that GitHub just imposed a limit on the release log length. Yeah. yeah. And we yeah, have yeah. to put the full one in the wiki and link it. It's I so I feel I feel like yeah, I feel like they're trying to force us to like make more smaller releases rather I mean, than if, I mean <laughs> if, I think if, yeah, if, yeah. If, if if you go through it and you look at the like other improvements yeah. These things, I mean, other slicers sometimes make releases just for these small things. Yeah, yeah. Like there yeah. is a comparison for, uh, for example, one of these things I noticed is comparison of the print settings. Yeah, that's very nice. You can pick, pick two yeah. profiles and it will show yeah. you the differences. I mean, them. and it just one that's great. the others. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's like in others, like one line, like, yeah, by oh. the way, it can do this. Who's that guy? Ah, it's. <laughs> I, I, I'm proud. Is it, is it Jippy? Uh, it's yeah. like Joe Clippy, Jiffy. It's Prusha <laughs> Clippy. Or Pippi. Pippi. Yeah, I don't know. Pippi, they call me, yeah. Oh, Pippi, yeah. They, they, or they, they call me Peppa in Czech. Yeah, this could be Pippi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but <laughs> unlike, unlike Mr. Clippy, we actually tried to make it helpful. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I hope mean, everyone will find I mean, it. I mean, maybe some someone... You know, you know the younger generations. They probably know, don't, don't know. Don't remember. Don't know. Yeah. yeah, I have no idea. But you, you, you have no idea. I All mean, right. So no other. <laughs> oh no, I know. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, saying okay. they would have no idea. They would have no idea. Yeah, no, I, I totally. I'm older than both of you, so. <laughs> Together. Yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, close to it. Uh, so, yeah. If I, so if I just with, go, like, I guess quickly through. Through the yeah, what are some highlights there? You're still the, sharing screen uh, there. I don't need to screen share that, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I <laughs> hey, everybody, to... that's that's our script. Um, yeah. <laughs> so... but, but I do need to open it because there are too many things to... to... So the, like, I guess, highlight feature is MMU painting. Yeah. But FDM supports, like, vastly improved a lot. There's new, like, yes. subtype of snack supports that do not bleed over edges. Yes. But even the, the grid supports are, are improved. Yeah, but I, th I think the snack is now default, right? I don't think so. Oh. I'm not sure. There is a dark mode for Windows, which was not, not available before. Oh, you, I mean, you can't imagine how much work the dark mode was. Yeah, it's really cool. For, for what it is, it was really yeah. close amount of work. Uh, fuzzy skin. You can now set a brim for individual objects rather than for everything at once. Also, surprisingly, big change. It's like, yeah, like core. Uh, negative volumes, which is basically Boolean, so you can subtract one mesh from another without having to do zero parameters, zero infill, zero everything. You just do, you know, subtract this mesh. Uh, if you uh, import a Prusa Slicer sign, it will automatically suggest color changes for you. Yes. Very cool. That is nice. Uh, shape gallery, which I will show you in a, in a second, which I think is really cool. Tips of the day, which we already showed partly. Uh, model simplification, you can decimate mod models with millions of triangles into smaller ones so that you can work with them, actually. And many, many, many of new things. Uh, for example, support for Mar Marlin to acceleration control. The 3D Labyrinth airplanes use sort of a hack oh, yeah. of how they overlap yeah. the geometry yeah. inside. So you can now pick how that is resolved so that it slices correctly. And also one of the one of the things I don't think I see it in yeah. the in your script is what people were asking for ages. Uh, but we finally caved in even though I don't think it is the right solution. Oh, true. You uh, can you can drag the model under the below the bat, yeah. below the bat to, to cut it. To cut it instead of using the cut tool. Yeah. We, we thought a cut tool is better, but yes. people wanted this, so so be it. Yeah. Uh, you can now pull the, I mean, why don't I screen share? Everyone um, has their own workflow, right? I, I definitely yeah. think the cut tool is the, the way to go, but. Yeah, you can just pull the model the like but the way 
the reason why we didn't want to do it is because it can be unintuitive of what it's doing. But now we've implemented, you know, uh, an outline of yes. where the model intersects the bed, and yeah, it's you know shaded differently. And I think it's pretty clear yeah. what is below the yeah. bed. And if you pull it above, it will snap back. Oh, the outline looks cool. Yeah, the outline is very nice. But yeah, we've already demoed the uh, MMU painting. I mean, the smart fill is so nice. Uses uh, an angle threshold to automatically detect uh, what should be colored. So you can just click. But of course, you can also uh, you know paint freely, and you can do a bucket which you know replaces the the color with another one. So that is. That is awesome, but we've already shown this, so why don't I hop back? Oh my god, I was really scared. I'm gonna have uh, profiles there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, one thing when you're doing modifiers or uh, support blockers or any kind of modifier, really, or just you know adding a part, uh, if you right click uh, the the build plate, you can add a, add, uh, a model. There is now a gallery which I think is awesome. And the gallery has some basic shapes. There are also the recyclable marks for Peggy. So if, you, if you're printing something big from PETG, you can do a negative volume <laughs> and subtract the PETG and basically imprint it to the bottom of the model, yes, which is, yes, I think, yes, pretty yeah. cool. I think, I think that's, we, that's something you and I talked about like a year and a half ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been, talking, I, I've been talking yeah. about this for ages. And actually, actually, in two weeks we are getting our new hire. We have a pretty kick-ass uh, sustainability manager. Nice, nice, nice. I like it. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, you can just basically do this, and it will have the the mark at the bottom, which is nice. But what I'm what I want to ask the viewers and our community is, I'm sure you know they are just the basic shapes right now. Uh, I'm sure you can think of some useful parts that we could include here. I can think of some connectors when you're like splitting parts, or maybe some smart shapes for support blockers or, or enforcers. I don't know. Maybe maybe you can think of something cool, that, or just some basic shape that it would be useful to have in the gallery to print often. I don't know. It's yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I already know that guys are working on. Uh, text so you can type in text that would be awesome that would be very cool yeah yeah sometimes you just want to make a quick uh, sign personalization so, of an right. existing I mean model. if you just want to make a quick sign you yeah. just drag in a box and you yeah you set it the way we're slowly turning slicer push yes. slicer into like a somewhat modeling yes software. I mean we now have 11 11 people yeah or 12. yeah yeah and yeah Let's add 10 more so, <laughs> so we can do that properly. <laughs> yeah, nice. But... Uh, I, I think we talked about the uh, the decimation a bit too, oh, yeah. right? Very nice. So you go right click, yeah. simplify model. I do have one thing that I, what do you think should happen? Like, you know, on the right, there's extra low detail. Mm -hmm. And on the left, there's extra high. I would personally flip it. I yeah, I, I, think... I think it. I think flip it. I mean, usually you have from zero to hundred, right? And zero right. should be extra low, and one hundred. I think. Be I think as I think so. Yeah. But anyway, this is alpha one, so I'm sure now, now that the three oh, of us yes. agree, we can maybe convince yes. the team to do yes. it. But yeah, you just do preview, and it will decimate the model. But one nice thing is, if you go uh, very low, you can actually make low poly models directly in Prusa Slicer, which I think is pretty dope. Isn't there? Uh, I, I think. Oh, right. You shouldn't make it by ratio. Yeah, it's just, for me, it's strange that uh, on, the, on the right, it's. Yeah, we need to have more resolution. Maybe, yeah. There was a. T type in the number of triangles. Maybe, but I am in. Mm, there was a different dialogue before. They simplified it. Maybe, maybe there's a. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, that's cool. So. And if we have the tips, I can actually think, yeah, show tip of the day. Ah, uh, did you know that Prusa Slicer is a shapes gallery? We've already talked about it, but I mean, what's nice about the tips is you can click them and it will show you the new thing, which I think is nice. But what I wanted to get to is if you import uh, a huge model, I think the threshold is one million triangles, mm -hmm. 
this pop-up, this tip will actually tell you, hey, this is a huge model. Do you maybe want to simplify it? And if you click it, you know, you can open the dialog. So, so how many tips did you guys write already? We want, I mean, like... I mean, just, just try turning the whole uh, change look into the tips. <laughs> I think, like, <laughs> for, for, for ish like, we wanted to have enough so that they don't become annoying by seeing the same one again and again. Mm. So I tried to think of as many as I could. Yeah. Uh, what 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 else should we should we show in a like quick? I mean, dark mode. I'm on Windows and I have dark mode. I mean, come yeah. on, yeah. it's nice. Yeah, we had to write write the separate components. Uh, yeah. So the UI looks different, but I think it looks much smoother now yeah. with these tabs. Uh, if you go into support settings, the snack yes supports are the probably the thing that will make the biggest difference for you. Yeah. Yeah. So you can you can try that, and there are tons of new settings. You can set uh, how much space. If a support starts on top of the model, you can set a different uh, distance from the model at the bottom and the top. Yeah. Because I mean that makes yes. sense that you that would want cool. those different. If you want to uh, check all the all the all the changes, uh, like Joe suggested. Uh, just go onto the release page yeah. and yeah, and grab and open it here because it's a long yes. read. <laughs> uh, we do have images for uh, many of the new features. Here we can see the the supports, the difference that for some models that it makes. But even for the grids, you can see that there was some leakage before, and that's uh, greatly yeah. suppressed with the with 2.4. Uh, nice. Yeah, draft shield also nice. You can yeah. just enable draft shield. This is the negative volume subtracting a cylinder. Yeah. Fuzzy skin, yeah, we haven't showed that, but maybe you've heard about it already. Yeah, and you can configure it. And these I, modifiers. I think, yeah. Yeah. I think fuzzy skin is is, oh, the, a, fe is a feature. Story. Yeah, I think fuzzy skin is a feature that doesn't get enough attention, but it's it's pretty neat, yeah. especially I mean, I mean, especially in, in that application that you were showing there where it's actually like, you know, yeah, touching yeah. haptic devices. I, I, I mean, I would love to. I would love to uh, marry it with the painting on the model. Oh uh, yeah, and, and maybe applying like different different textures, uh, as yes. I was speaking about a uh, long time ago to make textures. Yeah. And here we're looking at the safe margins for sequential print. Yeah. So it's very right. nice to have visual feedback for that. Well, um, and I. I don't want to be the buzzkill here, but you want to move on. Other we do have other pieces of news, and there That's there fine. are literally there are literally so many oh, no, no. changes go, to go this. Back that... to, go, go back to automatic color print. Yeah, if you if you slice a model which looks like a sign, yeah. you you don't have to do anything. It will just pop up that uh, slicer thinks it might be made into a color print, and. Uh, it just makes it for you. Let's go back to do some more Prusa Slicer showcase in the next stream because I think we can spend definitely some more time yeah, on I that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think we should do a lot of tweets and maybe a little yeah. short videos about yeah, yeah, all yeah. these features yeah. because this update. I mean, I, I was thinking about making it like a Prusa Slicer 3. <laughs> but then soon <laughs> we would be at uh, Prusa Slicer 10. But yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's huge. Okay. So it's fantastic. All right. Well, we have another release on the way. Yes. Um, oh, are we showing it today? I would show it. All right. Yeah, I would just like, you know, All right. it's All it, right. it's not happening today. We're not releasing it today. Yeah, but we I mean, we will not have a stream next week. Yes. So, so Ta-da! It's our own resin made in house. Yes. So I think the story is kind of similar, just as it was with Prusament, you know, having yeah. the material outside of, you know, our, you know, it was a variable that we couldn't affect before. Outside of our control. And, yeah. you know, there are some good suppliers, but also a lot of people buy from questionable suppliers. And uh, you really can't be sh so sure what is inside and how safe it is. Yeah. I mean, all resins are kind of nasty, but there is no reason to make them nastier than, than is necessary. Right. Yeah. So, for example, there is no BPA, bisphenol A, in yeah. our resin, which I think is fantastic. Yeah, and we chose all the all the components are low odor. We didn't uh, we didn't want to work with something which smells bad, 
and uh, also uh, it is much less irritating to the skin. And I mean, yes. Technically, I can't tell you that it's safe. And yet, it prints amazing detail. Yeah. Which was, you know, of course, if it's if it doesn't smell and but it doesn't print well, then it's like okay, that's that that that's not good. So we tested it that it prints amazingly well. Yeah. So wonderful low odor, uh, affordable resin for everyday printing coming soon. I don't know if we're gonna release it next week, but yeah, I think probably so. within like week or two max. Um, I, I mean, do do the uh, do the polymers guy know that we are just releasing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah they do. They, they do. do? Okay. Yeah, I, I asked, and they were like, "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sh sh show it, show it." And we will start with free colors. I think it's it's safe to yeah. safe to say that. But we will then. Oh, that's another. That's orange. Yeah. So, rich black. Prussia orange and anthracite gray, but a bunch of more colors <laughs> is currently in the testing, so I think you can expect more more colors. And I I will also assume more uh, materials. Like this is pr this is tough. Yes, I mean right. it, I mean we wanted to start with something simple, yes. nice to set up the manufacturing. Oh, open the image again. Oh well, I want to know something. Okay. And. Uh, yeah, I want, then we can move on to something okay. more difficult. But, Mikolas, can you tell me something about that model? Yeah, I mean, it's our model. It's it's mm. from our in-house sculptor, Vado, who is, I would say, very talented because the detail on the dragon is... Yes, I love it. Pretty nuts. Did it, didn't you show that model on Prusa Live I, I yes. so. a few episodes back? Yes, and yeah. it's also in the SL1S speed release video. Yes, I mean the nice. chain. The chain mail it. here. It's it's yeah. It's very nice yeah. model to showcase. The... And we have some pretty cool models uh, in on the way, right? Did we release the animals? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Fun more stuff. More, more more awesome stuff on the way. Uh, didn't we also have something? Oh yes, I yeah. wanted to mention uh, firmware just very quickly. Uh, 4.33 for the mini. I think something that the chat will be interested in is support for third-party extruders. So you will be able to, aim, I mean, also for mods from in the stock firmware. So you will be able to set different Z height if you extend the Z axis for some reason. And you will be able to save E steps and basically settings for something like a Bontech extruder if, if, yeah. you, if you're using that. Yeah. So you, you will not have, you. No longer you will have to use like a different firmware or anything. You will just you can use the stock one and set up yes. everything inside it. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Yes. Lots lots of cool stuff coming. Oh. Uh, but uh, the four three three is not out yet. It will be, I think. No, it's not. It's not out yet. This is it's it's currently in testing. There's yeah. also statistics for the mini. Just yeah. shouting out quick yeah. info about yeah. everything. Yeah, but I I think it should be on Friday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like the meme is so, alive. Yes, very soon. All right. So let's go ahead and bring Luca in. Yes. All right. So we are being joined with Luca from Out of Marbles. Um, and Out of Marbles oh, is a uh, a company designing marble mazes, and lots of them are are swappable and and build upon each other. So you can have anything from a little desktop toy to a, a five foot tower of of marbles, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, so thank you for joining us, Luca. Yeah, thanks for having me. Very cool. Uh, so. What inspired you to start creating marble mazes? Like, what? Why is why is marble mazes the thing that 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 you wanted to do? Wow. Yeah, well, you know, when I was a little kid, um, I always went to the big stores and saw the marble machines that they had. You know, those that you can assemble together into the marble run and drop the marble from the top. But you know, at that time, uh, we just Slovenia separated from Yugoslavia, so the money was tight back then, uh, so the parents couldn't buy me any, you know, so fast forward to four years ago, uh, me and my wife went to the Netherlands, we moved there because of her job, she got a great job, but I didn't speak Dutch, 
So she, so I couldn't find a job basically. So I was home playing computer games all the time, you know, <laughs> doing nothing. <laughs> so then I said, you know, I got to do something for my life. And I was really into 3D printers, you know, watching on YouTube, all the reviews and everything. And they started to become quite cheap, you know. So I was like, okay, let me let me start designing a little bit and we'll see where this goes, you know, my childhood uh, dreams, you know marble machines and so yeah i made a basic small one little one put it on the internet people loved it and you know they gave me great uh, comments and stuff and that just gave me inspiration to make big ones now. Firing. yeah yeah, they're they're super fun. Um, you know, I I love this one that's in the video that's going on where where you know you have these multiple courses and it you know there's there's timing systems that that decide which which one the ball goes to and then in other cases it's just totally random. Um, uh, in some ways, it kind of reminds me of some of the clocks that we saw in, in our most recent clock competition with with you know especially like the the decider that the switch that's deciding which which direction that they go into and. I think we did have some some marble based clocks in the the clock competition too. Um, it, it's yeah. super fun. Yeah, we, we uh, have, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how many how many mazes have you created? Well, so far uh, four marble machines, um, and then ten different of these modules that you can pick and place to different spots to basically have um, different marble machine every time. You know, you can pick ten different ones and then just uh interchangeably connect them so it always kind of feel fresh and also so, so yeah. that it's not just one design but over time we'll keep adding more and more so yeah uh mickey do you have do you have that video from evan of the, yes. the the tower that that evan created yes i do uh... yeah that can also be printed on prusa mini yeah nice but a lot of pieces <laughs> yeah so you're you're using you you not only sell the uh the model files for these but you also sell the the physical uh models yeah if you, I also if you have don't a, have a printer yeah i have small print farm only 12 printers for now so you know um, that's, pretty de that's pretty decent yeah yeah but you're you're running a an all prusa print farm right yeah yeah definitely yeah. Nice. So are, are you using... Yeah, because the when when you guys you guys should should update those those videos about your farm, you know, because those were real inspiration when I started. Because I I could see like four hundred printers running at the same time. You know, it's basically no brainer to to do a business out of this because you can see that your printers are really tested by by you guys also. So it's like they're gonna work for sure. Yeah, I think that's, that's yeah. one of the uh, things about our farm that people underestimate. Like, why don't you injection mode everything? First of all, it like for many parts it doesn't make sense. But even if it if it did, it's very nice to have the manufacturing capacity depending on our own product. Because yeah. if it sucked, it would cripple our own manufacturing. Yeah. So I mean, that is why the printers are so dialed in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, are you yeah, using so, uh, minis or or mark freeze? I, I assume maybe mark freeze for the bigger pieces uh, or. I have uh, mark threes and uh, seven minis. Okay, so it's so a he healthy mix. That's nice. Yeah, the minis the minis mostly print modules because the modules are thirteen by thirteen centimeters. So perfect. Mhm. Mm nice. Yeah, very cool. I, I love this that it's you know it's stacked it's like five feet yeah. tall and and you know Vertical. uh yeah I I think I think this is going to be a great display when we start seeing like maker fairs or things like Earth and Murph and and things like that again that you know people will be able to to show off uh of this stack and 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 I love that even your ball chain uh is printed like the only thing that's really there that's not is the 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 motor to to make mm -hmm. the the conveyor lift yeah yeah and i i think i think it will really enjoy using the uh fuzzy skin on some of the models which are just you know plain big planes 
that it can yeah. uh, I think it can break break up the surface and add more texture uh, to different pieces yeah it could be, yeah yeah. Experiment with that, yeah yeah it'll be very cool and and like you said that idea of like potential paint on fuzzy skin where you could keep certain parts smooth so that the marbles run well but add texture to the rest of it could be you can be use very, modifiers very cool. with fuzzy skin so oh you know, all right yeah, but uh, i mean i think it's still uh cuts the model yeah it makes fuzzy skin on the inside as well yeah, yeah. so that, okay. that is why i was talking about yeah, uh, yeah, yeah doing yeah, it yeah, yeah. in with, paint yes yeah. yeah very cool uh so are, are you continuing to develop more of these modules like you know are we going are we going to see the potential of like a 10 foot tall stacked uh 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 marble maze probably not 10 foot because the motor is like really tiny and there's no <laughs> how much it can lift you know yeah uh, but yeah i'm developing new, new designs uh, i sent you a picture of uh, one skate park module that i'm releasing very soon in the next weeks um where, where there's a there's a half, half pipe where the marbles go go like this and then there's a stairs where they go like this so it's mimic skate park and i'm also developing marble clock um, where you can check the time with just the boys just looking at them you guys had the competition for right. that right yeah, so yeah. definitely new designs uh, coming all the yeah. time. Yeah. And I'm trying, I'm trying to keep it all interchangeable with modules. So over time, it's just more and more. But I think, Luca, you're you're officially haunted by marbles because we can hear a little bit as if right. a marble machine was running in the background. Even though Luca said that there is no marble machine running in the background, yeah. but right. we can we can yeah. just hear it back. Yes. It, it's, it's like an it's, it's like an industrial band is warming up in in, <laughs> <laughs> in Lucas Audio. Uh, uh, so so what inspires you to you know create the the new modules? You said you have like the skate park coming and 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 things like that. Yeah, well, um, most of the time, you know, I just uh, check YouTube a bit, marble machines, because I'm basically live for that stuff. So I wanna see what other people create and just maybe I, I get inspired from that and I take I get inspired from a different designs and I just combine them into one maybe or uh, or people up, um, suggest me on Discord channel um, on my channel because I have it and they show just send my pictures there and stuff like that you know so so it's constantly new. What are you designing the parts in? What sort of software yeah. do you use? Uh, Fusion 360, basically, because at the time it was still like free. Now it's a bit more limited, but yeah, at the time it was free, and there's lots of tutorials on YouTube, so it was very easy to start and just go with it. It's Agreed. nice. It it looks pretty organic for Fusion 360. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Joe is just looking at the model that you've just uh, uploaded to Prusa Printers, the the bucket yeah. list. And you you normally sell the STLs, so this one is uh, free for uh, Prusa Printer users. Yeah. Nice. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much for sharing them. Yeah. But basically, when I was designing the tower, I wanted to first test the lifting mechanism because that's the most important part. If the marbles don't go up, then they can't come down either. So. Right. That's, that's the first part. So I said, okay, I will first make a small one uh, to test it. No, no point in making like one meter tall one and then yeah. it doesn't work. So I just made a small one and I said, okay, let me let me put this out for free. And the big one would be uh, for a small fee. So yeah, that, that was the thinking. Nice. Very nice. Uh, and are you using any other tools as as a designer? Are you using, uh, you know, a a tablet or a space mouse or like what what's your what's your design tool set? Just mouse and keyboard. Uh, yeah. I was trying to I was trying to learn how to use that. Uh, what is it? Did the mouse or what is it? Yeah, the space mouse. Yeah. Yeah, space mouse, but it's it's not so easy. So. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for now. Yeah. Definitely a learning curve on that. Oh yeah. That I have I have yeah. personally not overcome yet, but I don't. I only borrowed it for for a bit, but yeah. Oh, the space right. mouse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it takes some getting used to. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool, this is gonna be awesome, and then like, oh. Oh, and everything was upside down, and uh, like I was. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, when, when I first played it uh, a long time ago, I, I got sort of into a point that I was able to, you know, get to the piece of model, uh, to the piece on the model which I wanted to, but it was certainly not efficient. But it is wonderful to watch uh, when someone is, uh, yeah, someone knows how to use it. Yeah. It's like it's, be it's beautiful. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's uh, we have a question from Mikalunska Aid. Do you have uh, any? Do you keep any statistics of you know how many uh, mar marble runs are there in the world from you? Do you have any idea how, how many you've sold and I guess printed? I don't know. I think uh, what's a real number. Sorry to surprise yeah. you with that question, you know, to ask beforehand. But yeah, it just popped in the chat, so I. Yeah, think. on my website we had like, like for the number, like we had like thousand five hundred orders, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah, but a lot of those are obviously free ones because you can download their free one. Uh, and yeah, I had to, uh, I just had the Prusa printers and on other websites had. So I think there's a couple of hundred because. A lot of people obviously download it and don't print it. So, you know, right. I know. Well, I definitely, I definitely want to build one. So we, we, we will try to get a, another one in. It would, one would be awesome in the the entrance way of the the factory there, just sitting there, plunking yeah, down marbles all, all the time. The, all the way from the top to the bottom in there. Wow, that would be insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I sold one, assembled one to some German uh, guy, a bit older guy, and he has he has a quite a big house. And one person he hired someone to come in and build a marble track towards the whole house. And they are big marbles. They are basically a pool pool um, pool boys. Mm -hmm. so they're going through the whole house pool mm -hmm. boys and jumping through his living room and stuff like that. What? Yeah, yeah. Online and, yeah and he told me once it hit his grandma in, her, in the head when she was sitting on the couch. So. <laughs> That's fun. <Yeah. laughs> some yeah, some people careful. really take it so seriously. <laughs> yeah, got to be careful with the bigger machines for sure. Yeah. So that's fantastic. So where can our viewers uh, find your models if they're they're looking for them? Obviously, Prusa Printers has has the one now, but if they're looking for the yeah. the, the larger stacks, yeah, on my website outofmarbles.com, uh, there you can check it out. Uh, also, there you can sign up on my newsletter when I release a new design. Mm -hmm. And also, maybe YouTube channel you can subscribe and you will get notified. Yeah. Yes, I've pasted some of the links for your websites and right. social in the description on YouTube. Fantastic. Well, Luca, thank you very much for showing off uh, your project to us. Uh, it is it is super fun and whimsical. Yeah. And yes, I think we all saw Marble Machines, you know, someplace uh, as kids and kind of dreamed of having a, a fun one and you know just being able to print your own and and the modularity of it of being able to change things out and, and expand and grow i think is is a lot of fun so i uh, hope to see them in action at some maker fair or, or show, oh, yes. show like that in oh, yeah. person so that we can also chat in person yeah. i mean right. we, we are we are organizing maker fair in prague but i don't think it's possible to do it th this year with with all the travel right. stuff yeah i guess but next here. year yeah Maybe next year. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So thank you for joining us and we will we will talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay, sorry everyone for the sound quality. We knew it wasn't yeah. perfect, but there is only so much so much you can do. It we, we tested it beforehand, it was coming back and forth. Like it was fine for a second, then it wasn't. So hopefully yeah. it was Listenable. <laughs> yeah. It was very uh, uh, 
it was interesting. It had a rhythm which which I <laughs> <Yeah>. liked. <laughs> yes. He he swears there was no marble machine running in the background, but <laughs> I believe him. I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Jury's out. All right. So uh we have our first alive contest. Uh we do. which, you know, it's it's been a while. Um so but we had we had some really great entries. Um so yeah, Mickey, who is our our third place for our show us your prints contest? So, um just pulling number three as we speak. Yeah, so for those of you that, that haven't seen the show before or don't remember, um, we have a contest that's just for this show, um, mm -hmm. which is our Show Us Your Prints contest. To enter, it's super easy. Just take a photo of a print that you're doing on the, the build plate of your machine um, on your Prusa and uh, tag it Pound Prusa Live on Twitter, and you're entered. And we we pick a, a few winners every, every show and... Uh, Give away some filament. So who do who do we have in third there? I really want to make sure I have the right window open before I do this. <laughs> so at third place we have Mr. Fable with his X-wing print. It, it's is it Le it's Lego X-wing, right? Is it? Uh, no, it's not. It just looked a little. No, bit, I don't. The, yeah, the, I, the think I think it's I think it's kind of the same scale. Yeah. 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 But yeah, uh, very nice print. And, oh, and yeah, through, through the, the entire, you know, this one's fun because through the entire, like, chain of tweets, he shows, like, in progress, because this is this is another one of these, everything's printed in separate pieces and then snaps together, and so all you right. get to see all the, all the pieces of the R2, all the pieces of the Luke. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. But I think we saw Mr. Flibble on the show previously, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah we've, we, we've seen him in the, yeah. the, the winners before. The name is definitely rememberable. Yeah. Remember, remember, yes. remember, 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 remember. I'm not gonna say that ever. <laughs> yes, and that like chicken penguin icon for his his avatar too. Yes. Yes. All right. So who do we have for number two? So coming up with number two is Nicholas Bellin oh. with his. Oh, I mean, it's a whole. It's a whole village, whole city. Oh yeah. my god. For tabletop gaming, yeah. Yeah, I really loved this on the scale. I mean, um I mean, and, and I love I love that he qualified by by putting it on his build <laughs> plate. But there's just there's just parts everywhere. You can see I his mean, mini, I mean, you can see his does mark it, three. Does and... it classify as tabletop uh gaming if it's like actual buildings? Yeah. I mean yeah, like, cool. right. This big with multiple floors. Yeah. Right. Wow, and you know this this has the added fun of you know he went back in and painted everything and mm -hmm. really you know gave it the the detail and the character that that makes it stand out. I just I thought this was do, a, do, a very do do we have the print, print time for this? I don't think, but I don't know, in, Nicola, maybe, Nicholas. Nicholas, are you reply? are you in the chat? Yes, Nicholas. If you're in the chat, let us know how long did this take to print. But I would assume this would be like what like 150 hours. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Is of it time. in the replies? Maybe. No, it's just that it's not done yet. Oh, oh yeah. of course. <laughs> There's always <laughs> more parts to print. You can always print more. I mean, he's not going to have a village at some point. He's going to have an entire city of. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have. A, I want to. Uh, we have a housing problem here in Prague. We don't have enough buildings for people to live in. So if he if he <laughs> wants to print something, yeah, in Prague, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So now we can move to the winner. Our the winner. First, and this is place. this is definitely a name that we know yes. for sure. Yes, that's oh, a name really? that we know pretty well. And it's Ray Giza. And Congratulations. What's your what's yeah. your starting Pokemon in generation generation one? Because I think I think I will I I was the very first time I was starting with Bulbasaur. Okay. Bulbasaur squad, but I, I'm over the years I played with every every single one. Well, here we have, it's a what what was it called in mural in English? No, this, this Charizard, is isn't it? I mean, Charizard it, it, it is, is the Pokemon like, for it, sure. It's like stained window. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In churches. Yeah. Oh, oh, stained glass. Yes. Oh, stained Sorry, glass. I get yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's a it's a stained glass effect. 
uh, using uh, you NMU. Know, uh, an, M- an MMU. Um, and then, yeah, he turned it into a lamp. And so Very nice job, Preach. It's very good. It, yeah. It looks awesome. Uh, I, I mean, it has magic know, on I, it, so... I now want to get my uh, Nintendo... Switch. Uh, and, yeah, yeah. And play some Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> or the original Game Boy, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, some of the late, you know, the, uh, well, the leaf green, or the, these, yeah. the, these for the Game Boy Advance, they were nice. Yeah. Okay, so congrats, yes. Regisa, you win. Right, very beautiful print. Yeah. So fantastic. All right, so we have uh, some time for some questions. I saw some already. One of them was how to install Prusa Slicer from GitHub. Depending on your system, you just download the file and either unzip the, unpack the zip package and launch the exe or yeah. launch the app image on yeah. Mac or, or on Linux. Yeah. yeah. And um, it should you, be pretty you, straightforward. Yeah, you, especially on Windows, you don't have to copy it to the folder where the installer uh, installs the main uh, main driver installation because uh, these alphas and betas they are using different config uh, they are using different config uh, folder so you can run it simultaneously to the production one so yes. you don't have to worry about overwriting your settings Ace. and stuff Essa so. uh, Heiskanen is asking what improvements do we have for SLA printers? Hopefully optimal orientation functionalities. Yes. Yes. That's, that's one of the things in the humongous release notes. I think there's even an image for that. Yes. Let me just You can you can <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm just scrolling furiously through the ridiculously long changelog. Yeah. But yeah, you, you can now choose what, what to optimize for, what goal. So that's pretty nice. Yeah. There are more changes for SLA, uh, SLA slicing. There are bug fixes, and yeah, a bun- bunch more stuff for SLA printers. Uh, so we ha- we have a question coming in from Mike Henry, and I've also seen it in Discord that they're wondering when the SL1S resin calibration tool will be available. Oh, uh, resin calibration tool. So uh, I don't I don't know exactly what what I mean we mean. did have the screen calibrator for S L one that is no longer necessary for yes. the S L one S yes because we have because we have the values baked into the display driver now. yes um yeah I'm not sure sure what the device what what do you mean Mike but if you have uh, a resin that you would like profiles for you can definitely send. Send us an email because we we do try to buy basically everything that's on the market and try to make profiles for it. Yeah, they they're actually asking for like an exposure time finder. Um, oh, so, I th- we we had yeah. something like that for SL one, right? Oh, there was like one a, for the SL one, like yeah. a feature for the for the printer. Yes, uh, I will check. Okay, but I, I I would assume that it's there, but yeah, okay. I mean it's using the the like. Uh, Upgraded firmware, basically, yes. but all the features should still be there. Oh, resin collaboration file. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see now. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yes. Just re- reading the the uh, resin collaboration <laughs> file that you say. We also had a question further up. It's not there. Uh, okay. Someone someone asked when the um uh when the the winners for the board game contest will be announced. Um, the board game contest hasn't even been over for 12, 12 hours yet, <laughs> like, or for 24 hours yeah. yet. So um, uh, it, it will be coming soon, um, but yes. We try to go them through the submissions quite. How many, how many are there? I haven't actually checked. I don't remember right now. Let's see, I've got it. Uh, the right ones here. we like the most, we, we often try to print because that's very right. often when you discover uh, yeah. the 356, 356 centuries, yes. yeah. 
I know I definitely saw some entries that I really liked, and I right. I always I I want to feature uh, the prints on the homepage. I'm like, but I can't because it's submitted in the in the competition, and I, <laughs> right. I wanna you know you have to wait until the competition's yes. over. You uh, can you can now. I've pulled the uh, uh, I have pulled the the nice the likes the, the yeah the likes. So you you won't be altering the the competition by featuring things at uh, this point. Three supports. Uh, that's a valid question. We get it a lot. Uh, it's reasonable that you ask about it now that Prusa Slicer 2.4 is out. It's definitely something we want to do, but it's one of those huge features such as MMU painting. So uh, no idea when we'll get to it, but we, we hear that you, you want it. One thing that I would say is the demand for it, I would expect to fall a little bit because the reason I think why people want three supports is because they were unhappy with the current support, but I think they are way better now. Yeah. So I think definitely the, try them. Yeah. So the reasoning for three supports might be a little bit like lower lower need for them now. But yes, we definitely hear that all of you want three support. So I know that the team has already done some research into them. Yeah. So they are reading papers on them and just doing their you know theoretical research before. They just jump and code something that doesn't work. So, yes. <laughs> Any idea what the average age of your users is? Uh, Oof, that is very difficult. But pulling pulling it from uh, from uh, just the, I can tell maybe the viewers, but yeah, it would be like around thirty five ish. So. Yeah, viewers will be younger, but I mean at the shows I I've had like sixty five years old engineers coming to our stand and saying that they are fans. And at the same time, we had like, you know, six year old kids coming that they are loving the printer and printing with their dad all the, all, all the time. And definitely, you know, I would say it's pretty well. Uh, I'm, I have a hard time finding words today. Uh, uh, all the age groups are well represented. It is not just for you know younglings. Hmm. Yeah, young, young, younglings are. Uh, I mean, the the younger generation is just more vocal on the on on the social media. Oh, we have eighty two years. Nah, oh, I. I mean, it's hard to validate what the people are saying in chat, but you know. Yeah. Right. Ninety four, sixty six. Um, we had a question earlier uh, about Prusa Academy. If you bought yeah. Mark free. S plus assembled in the past few months, you got a little card uh, saying that you got access to it. Uh, right now, that's basically a website that has a very detailed uh, course from everything from taking the thing out outside of the box to creating your own models and slicing them yourself. Yeah, but but the general idea it, it is like the more advanced courses with with tests and stuff for other. Yeah, uh, we we are uh, we are finishing one with uh, someone you may know. Yes, but I will not tease that. But <laughs> you know, imagine. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think everyone must have seen the master class uh, ads. So yeah. it's it's something like that. But yeah, three pr printing. Some of them will be for free. I'm not sure yeah. if if all of them. Probably not because some of them will probably be quite advanced and yes detailed. Yes, and so some some of the stuff is you know, we have the information out for free for a long time. Yeah, but this is just more way more advanced. Yeah, anything new on Prusa Academy? So a course for the mini, which will be basically the same thing as it is for the Mark Free, just you know for the different printer that is coming, and then we have courses it's, for it's different. It's not topics. out yet. I was shooting the video like three weeks ago. Uh, What's sticking you so long? Guys, yeah, <laughs> don't look at me. I think it's done. It's just not not published yet. It's not it's not public. Okay. Yes. Uh, I mean, if we have if we have time, you can. Uh, we do. You you can show how it looks. Oh, push I can. Yeah, I can. Okay. Yeah, if people are interested. Yes. And Matt, if you have other questions before, oh, I mean, it's gonna be um, pretty quick. A lot of people are asking about power fail recovery on the mini. Um, if that's still on the way, yes. Uh, I think guys are working on it. You know, slowly, slowly chewing through uh, all the stuff. 
We just we just went through. through uh, they just added the stu the odometer, the statistics. Yeah, but, but you know, over the last year, a lot of the capacity was on the debugging of the USB stack to make the yeah. print, printing as it's stable as possible. Crazy how much work. Yeah. Like you can you can yeah. spend on the USB. I mean, to I mean, yeah, I, I I'm pretty fed up with um, with ST because you know we we are using their USB stack and it is definitely not as nice as they as it should be. Yes, but here we're looking at Prusa Academy, so you can see there are chapters and you can see how far you've gone in the in the course, and it's you know as I said you have the. Uh, just you know, installation of the printer, going through the wizard step by step. There's not nice animations through everything that you have to do, which I think is very helpful. And uh, yeah, you go through things like first layer calibration, which is of course very important to have a successful first first print. And there are helpful images, info boxes, and yeah, it just you go just next, 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 and at the end. You get a. You <laughs> get a give, don't give up. <laughs> yeah, I get, I have two correct eleven wrong. No, I I suspect I. Did I, did I you took, mi did you miss the oh. which is Joseph Rusa question? I took to this very <laughs> seriously. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, I had this one. I mean, cl cl clearly it's this one. I had it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, looks like Tinkercad. There maybe implement more Tink Tinkercad features into Prusa Slicer. I mean that is basically what is happening. Yeah, I was uh, uh, I was speaking about it with Wojciech, but we need more people and we have more important features now. But basically, you can do already a lot of stuff. Yeah. But you yeah, know, we, we would just need to do like model snap model snapping to each other yeah, yeah. and some measurement tools. But it will slowly get there, with but it is, it is not the main focus. With modifiers and now the negative volume and the add part basically is a positive volume, like a Boolean union. So you you can do these things kind of already. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, nice, that's nice side effect of the Boolean negative is, I mean, this is a terrible model, model to showcase it. But if you do negative volume cylinder, you can do like parametric holes in Prusa Slicer, mm. because you know, this will be saved in the 3MF as a sender. So if this was a cat part, it would make way more sense than <laughs> doing it. Nicholas, the best teacher in the world. <laughs> yes, in the Oh, hey, I made it actually kind of work. Yeah, but now you have a parametric hole that you can resize and you know you're, you can you're not sharing the video of that oh you're, yeah the two of you are just staring at us the two of you are just staring at a screen and talking about something the rest of us can't see oh. that's hilarious yeah too many things we want yeah but here i did uh add negative volume <laughs> cylinder and then i just resized it and now i have a uh w what is the main focus of the slicer i mean to make it the best slicer on this planet yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean, defocusing this, uh, you know, working on the slicing, the the core of the program, on making you know very mediocre editing software yeah. is not. Uh, we don't have enough people for that now. Yeah. Well, yeah. one of the one of the the nice things though about some of the edits that we've we've added are they're very basic things that a lot of users want to be able to do and yes. while you can you can do them from time to time in other pieces of software sometimes it's not that intuitive or easy to do these yeah, things I mean, and i think i mean the, the, these things we have now as editing is yeah. uh, we are saving a lot of people a trip to the editing program to do something super basic right but i mean to to let's say if we would uh, want to make like you start with nothing and you want to build the model uh, to make it into like a 3D modeling program, it it doesn't make sense for us now. Right. Uh, someone in chat is asking, what if the hull is not supposed to be at Z0? You can lift modifiers and parts of the model up. They don't have to be on the build plate. It's just the some part of the model has to be touching the the build plate, you know, to be printable. But you can you can lift individual parts up. I mean, even the the printable, that's what many people are asking. Like, how do I lift thing from the bat? If it's a part, you, you totally can just, you know, whoop, it's up. But this would fail. <laughs> but you can, if you want to. Um, well, very cool. 
Do we have any last questions? Yes, we have like a minute or two, maybe. Uh, how would you feel about other companies shipping their printers with Prusius Laser? I mean, we already have uh, profiles for third-party printers built yeah. into Prusius Laser. Yeah, it is so, fine. So I guess yeah. that's fine. I mean, it's the, the same direction that we already saw Cura go in, in, I mean, in many uh, ways, I, right? I mean, so. Uh, I just I just don't like if one someone does like one to one copy to our printer. Yeah. I consider that lazy right. and I will not add that. Or if someone like did a fork of Prusa Slicer and only changed the logo and made it oh, yeah. um, like if you if you improve it, fantastic. Like make a fork and you know, we can merge the merges and the all the software will get better and everyone will benefit. If someone just r reskins it, that's kind of yeah. I mean, I mean, like uh, <laughs> so, some companies do with Cura. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what yeah. I was kind of hitting at. Yeah. Right. I, I think, yeah, this this BS is in front of us at some yeah. point. Yeah, <laughs> probably. So one last fairly yeah. interesting interesting question: uh, uh, Would it be possible to add support for pre warping models to correct for thermal expansion of filament? I would um, assume someone saw the video from Veritasium about three D printing rockets, where it was amazing. They print with metal and they print it yeah. warped. So that when it cools down, it deforms into the correct shape. Oh, this, this is uh, this is different. This is, dif this is different. Uh, I, I I think well, it will be different uh, if you have a heat chamber and if you have like open printer. Yeah. Because uh, this is very this would be very hard to simulate because uh, when we are printing, you know the the layers and the model shrinks before the next layer is down, and the plastic is uh, insulator, so you. I mean, the metal just kind of keeps everything in the same. Uh, I haven't seen the video. I'm yeah, just, yeah, I'm just yeah. guessing. The metal is a good conductor and keeps everything at the same temperature. Oh, I see. Much. I see what you mean. And yeah. with the plastic, it would be difficult. It would have to be in a heat chamber, and then you would be able to do it. Okay. Uh, so, so the whole model would be cooling down at the same pace. Right. Well, everyone. That is our show. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, sorry it has been so long. Um, we do have another show coming this month, so don't worry. It won't be uh, quite as long of a, of a gap this time, but we are going to have another show at the end of the month. And then uh, hopefully we'll be on a kind of end of the month cycle moving forward for continued shows. Um, yeah. So uh have a great time stay safe keep printing and we will see you in a few weeks uh, thank you bye-bye bye everyone thank you